Hello to everybody out there in YouTube land and welcome to day 11 of the May painting challenge. We have here our Space Moon Librarian. I've done a few things to him today before I started filming. Uh, let's see if I can point them out to you. Um, first off, because I had the red that I used for, for um, this uh, already out and I noticed he has some cables running here and there or wires of course any place where you have two wires you need to have one green and one red I mean that's just common sense everybody knows that and I, and I put in that little detail up here as well uh, the second thing I did was I started doing the metallics because I knew I wanted to wash them and, and watching a wash dry is not Interesting, so I started out with my game color gunmetal and put that on just about every metallic, silver metallic area. Not the very smallest ones, because they're just gonna get silver. Then I did, at least on some parts like the gun, a wash of, uh, well, of, of an ink actually. It's an ink that I've mixed myself, which is, is a combination of black and blue. Um, and then I reglazed this shoulder because I messed up several portions here. I put too much metallic paint and it went over and I had to fill it in with blue paint and then it looked uneven. So uh, I reapplied a few glazes and, and had to watch them dry. Now, uh, next step is to use the chainmail. I'm gonna plop this down on my palette. I didn't prepare that because Metallic paints, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but metallic paints don't respond as well to a wet palette as normal paint. They dry just as fast as, as they would, you know, on just a, a regular palette. Um, so I only put down the metallic paint just before I'm going to use it. And let's see, what needs to be highlighted? I'm not going to highlight everything with the chain mail because not every metallic part is large enough to need three tones. Uh, I'm going to use some silver for the final tone. I mean, many parts will just be uh, gunmetal and then straight to uh, silver. But for example, here on the top of the gun barrel and some of these parts and this and I'm just I'm not thinking too hard about where I'm placing this I'm just putting it in a place that seems to stick out it seems like it would be more in the light um, I'm adding a, a touch of the chain mail because seems like a good idea right now while I'm doing this I might think about the question of the day what is the question of the day it's about movies again this time it's about existing movies what movie would you like to see a sequel or remake of now I'm gonna say go with a sequel because remakes suck there is very little reason to actually ever make a remake most most remakes are have have no reason to exist it's ju it's just bad um so i'm going to suggest a se sequel to an old cult classic which is called the adventures of buckaroo banzai across the eighth dimension don't know if you've ever seen it it's it's kind of special. I'm not sure I know how to describe it to somebody who's not seen it. It's it's just a weird but fun film. If you if you have any sort of aspirations to geek cred, I suggest you go out and find it and watch it if you haven't seen it before because it will improve your nerd standing. Um, 
let's see, I, I painted this, well, should I highlight this? Okay, a little dot. The, 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 the chain or string holding these keys, I painted a silver metallic. I'm going to paint the keys themselves a gold uh, later on. Oh, and I almost forgot this. This studded metal garter belt he's wearing for some reason. I have no idea. It just looks kinky. But, hey, he's wearing it. Oh, and I have to highlight this cable. I painted this metallic. Uh, I'm just doing a light overbrush here. I'm removing most of the paint from the brush so it doesn't go down into the crevices and just very lightly brushing over. Um, here a little bit have I missed anything oh here right I'm not sure what these little boxes here are but they stand out quite a lot and so I think they should be metallic I think I got everything Hmm. Uh, the, like I said, these, these really, really small rivets, I'm just going to go straight to silver on those. I'm not even going to put two tones on them. It's, they're not big enough for that. And similarly studs here on the, uh, on the shoulder pads. And, and, and the second the highlight for these. Uh, I might put a little chainmail on the ones on the bottom. Let's, well, yeah, maybe maybe that's a good idea to, to, high, to take like the bottom two or three rows on this shoulder and highlight them chainmail and then the top ones I'll hi highlight with silver. See if that makes any noticeable difference in my, in my head it will be noticeable. Like so. Now it's time for the silver. You're seeing this real time, no cutting. And oh, here you can see that, yeah, the sword is still not perfectly straight. I, I wasn't able to fix that completely. Ah, stupid, stupid, stupid resin material. Fine cast, huh, what a joke. So let's go in with a little bit of silver and uh, let's see if I can see this well enough. Just do the tips of these. And actually, I think I will have to cut at some point because to do the really fine detail, I think I need to bring it closer to my face so I can see what's going on and that I, I won't be able to stay in frame. Um, just for the really, really tiny stuff. But for the gun, uh, I'm just gonna de just the very tops here, a little bit. The gun shouldn't be that bright. I'm thinking of dirtying it down a little bit, like adding some soot to the muzzle, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'll think about it. Should I add some on top here? Hmm. Maybe just the tiniest. That's there. And the corner here. And the little thing standing out. There. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to fix these extra small studs off camera and I'll be right back with you. And he's done in all his blingy glory. Uh, I even painted a few spots that I'd forgotten about the first time around, like for instance. Uh, certain portions of, I, I think it's like like the um, the holder for these scrolls, for example. 
and uh, yeah he looks very silvery not right now but that's um, other lighter colors will be painted on like uh, parchment and gold metallics and so forth that will so, so the silver won't be the only really bright stuff and yeah I think I'll be happy with this for today because you know I've actually accomplished everything I set to out to do in week two already I'm, I'm ahead of schedule this time so anything that get, gets done tomorrow or Wednesday is a bonus and tomorrow honestly not much will get done because Tuesdays this month have turned out to be the worst days for painting uh, so that's probably gonna be a wash anyway uh, what else can I show you um, well we have these little spiders done uh, oh they're not in focus uh, I decided to forego naturalism and I just made some s colors up painted a little bit of dark green on the uh, behind and I perhaps I went a bit overboard with the fangs with a bright fluorescent green but uh, we'll call them magical poisonous spiders um, oh and I finished this guy I finished this is just another Bones Mini, uh, Half Orc uh, Assassin, I think it's called. And most of it's just really simply painted. But I did finish the cloak using a wet blending technique. I'm not sure how well you can see the transitions here, if it's in focus. But yeah, it's OK, I think. Um, it's an early experiment. I don't know if you're wondering why I'm so gung-ho about painting up all these bones. Is it just because I can't stand the sight of that big box of plastic? Well, partially, partially, but it's also a question of numbers. You see, beginning January this year, I started keeping track of exactly how many miniatures I paint and how many new minis I purchase because I have this huge mountain of unpainted minis. Uh, I, I don't even want to think about how many hundreds of them there are and I want to try to reduce that overstock or that deficit so I'm trying to keep um, yeah paint more than I buy paint more than I purchase and right now that total is positive I'm actually ahead but I have a couple of purchases coming up that I know I want to make and they might put me into the red if I don't paint up a lot of stuff in advance. And the simplest way to do that is, is models that I can speed paint, uh, that I don't care too much about making a really great finish on. So that's why you will probably continue to see me paint up a lot of bones. Um, well, I think that's everything for today. Like I said, tomorrow will be a very short video probably but I will pop in and do something at least. So that's Dakion signing off for day 11. See you tomorrow.